a struggle with your sofa gear then? Let's see what we can make to fix it. This is what you need. So as you might guess, what I've been working on is a wheel stand for my son stroke me. Um, and the reason I built my own is because this is what it can end up like. It may fold it down, packed away in a cupboard, and great out the way. So let's go see how we made it. So this is the model I ended up with, um, and it's I'd say it's a pretty good representation of what I ended up making, but it, well, it should because <laughs> these were 3D printed parts. This was my first attempt at starting to mess with some joints and things, so they sort of work. You know, so these two are linked, you can move them. These aren't tied to the other parts purely because the idea is that you can have it at different heights. So if one of my sons is using the, the wheel, they can make it lower if they need to. Also, it can be used with different types of seats and that kind of thing. So yeah, so this way they can adjust. These are getting left behind, they're not part of the rigid group. But um, but yeah, and then this can be rotated. So what I'll do is I'll just play it through. This is one feature that you can use and it'll show how I designed it. Started off with some basic boxes and some sketches, expanded it out. Basically what I did was I designed only one side of it and then did a mirror to capture everything on the other side, which is far less hassle and much less work. And I'm all about that really so so yeah so this is how like I say I went about it the some of the details I'll, I'll, I'll go into such as this mechanism which I'm, I'm quite pleased with and allows you to um, actually rotate the, the bill plate the bill plate the wheel plate it, it works really well designed some some teeth that that interlock into each other um, and there's a bolt hidden in the middle of there so what I will do is I'll just make these visible. Okay, so here we have these two items I mentioned and I am pretty pretty pleased with these. I hate rotating around these sketches on like this. Okay, so you'll see here there's a hex nook shape and the idea is that that will work with a long bolt and that'll go through and then through the wood also that goes through the middle of this um, second holder and then pokes up the other side through this hole and then put a small um, nut on there and that keeps it rigid and the beauty is that if I hide one side of this you can see it's a the, with the pattern with the raised um, edges it's identical on the other side and so the two of them lock in together now it does mean because it's like this it, it'll never be completely flat um, so they can't go in line but they never have to when you're using it, it the wheels always going to be at an angle and you've got about I think it was 13 degrees or something like this it, no actually it should be less than that let's if we make only him active and then if we go into here and then zoom in. This is the sketch for the face of the, the locker mechanism. So we have, it's 10 degrees. So it's five degrees on each slope to make each tooth up, if want a better description. So that means it's gonna have to be done in those five degree increments, but that it works really well in, um, in practicality. If I finish that sketch and if we go back to viewing everything yeah works really well that's one thing I'm, I'm very pleased of I'll just make everything visible again there we go I must point out the actual wheel and the the gear stick and pedals um, I found on line I can't remember the website now I will link them down below these aren't mine and they're beyond my capabilities so they're not something that I'm going to put on Thingiverse obviously they're, they're not my model that was just to give me a better representation of you know kind of roughly size and feel. It did actually end up being wider slightly on the mountain plate than I'd originally envisaged, but it works really well. And that was purely for laziness when I came down to cutting the timber. So yeah, there's not much more to say than that really. The only things I did omit were these 
back left and back right mount and the reason for that is in the intro you'll have noticed that it was it was actually tucked under the sofa i did a quick test with the timber and the issues i ran into were the this would fell on the bottom the timber which is 32 millimeters tall just fitted under so i think the idea will be to just leave those off i'm gonna have to get another 2.4 meter length of timber i think and I'm gonna make some cross braces, but what I'll do is I'll make some angle brackets, but then I'll make it so that there's no top section or bottom section on them so it won't increase the height. Uh, the other thing I haven't done also is to create a place to mount the pedals to. Now, at the moment I've done that purely because they're on carpet and the Logitech pedals have grippers on the bottom and they actually work really well, but I might do that still yet because it means if you do a, a plate you can screw in from the bottom of the plate the same as if i haven't done it yet but you can screw in from the bottom of this plate into the wheel mount at the moment i'm just using the regular clamps and they work fine but yeah there's two mountain holes here and there's mountain holes under the pedals and the advantage would be if i do this and i could do some more 3d print little brackets that'll just give the whole frame a bit more stability it's not too bad at the moment it yeah it, it, it's fairly robust, but it could be more robust. Maybe it's another cross member here um, across the front and that would secure it a bit more. What I'll do is I'll grab the wheel stand, I'll go to full screen and I'll show you how it works for changing the pitch of the wheel mount. So this is the wheel stand assembled and basically I've just popped through the bolts on either side. It would be cool to have some kind of spring-loaded mechanism for popping them apart but for the amount of times it's going to go up and down it's actually it's not a huge issue and as you'll have seen when it was held down i've just put a secondary hole down here which this upright it means the same bolt that's used to lock it in the bottom brace can lock it into this main leg and that means it just stops them flapping around i think it definitely does need a end piece on the bottom like i mentioned so I'll put those brackets on, I'll revise the design slightly. You need to make sure you get the right size bolts and make sure you create the right size hole, otherwise you're gonna start cracking the plastic. I've done it on one of them. But the beauty is you can just reprint. So what we can do here for changing, just loosen these bolts. I've got an idea for some kind of holders for the bolts to make it um, hand turnable. But once you loosen it enough, you can then just rotate it around to whichever angle you need. So for storage, probably an angle vaguely sympathetic to there would be best. And these are identical mirrored, so they will go in line. If I take out the two button bolts, flip that nut, I take out this other button bolt, there you go. And then what we can do is just flip that flat, use the same bolt like I mentioned, straight in there, and straight in there. There you go. And then the idea is that can just go away in a cupboard, that can hide. It's pretty thin. Obviously you've got the wheels and everything, but install those on a shelf. And that is perfect, works really well. You ain't got to be, at the moment, because it hasn't got those extra braces, you've just got to be conscious of how you're picking it up. But I don't think that's too unreasonable at the moment. And it's all 3D printed, some basic nuts and bolts from the hardware store. And that's it, it's brilliant. I did do a small montage, so I'm going to just put that at the end of the video with the overlays and everything else on there so thanks for watching please feel free to subscribe and share it and uh, thanks very much